Hello friends, in this video we are going to talk about Annex 2 of MARPOL. So let's get started. Annex 2 is the regulation for the prevention of pollution by noxious liquid substances carried in bulk. Now this annex does not apply to harmful substances carried in any kind of packaging. This only applies to noxious liquid substances and chemicals which are carried in bulk. Annex 2 came into force on 6th of April 1987. Now carriage of chemicals in bulk is covered under two main conventions. First is the SOLAS Chapter 7 which is the carriage of dangerous goods and second is the MARPOL Annex 2. Now both of these conventions which is the MARPOL Annex 2 and SOLAS Chapter 7 require chemical tankers which are built after 1st July 1986 to comply with the International Bulk Chemical Code. Now International Bulk Chemical Code is a book which is to be carried by all vessels which are carrying chemicals and noxious liquid substances in bulk by sea. It contains some safety standards which are to be maintained while carriage of these dangerous chemicals and noxious liquid substances in bulk. This also sets out minimum design and construction standards of these vessels which are carrying dangerous chemicals and noxious liquid substances. IBC code also contains a complete list of chemicals and their environmental hazard rating. As per Annex 2, these noxious liquid substances which are carried by sea are categorized into four main categories on the basis of the harm that they can cause to the marine environment. So these four categories are category X, category Y, category Z and other substances. Now we'll be looking into each category one by one. So let's go to category X. The noxious liquid substances which fall under category X if discharged into the sea from tank cleaning or deblasting operation are deemed to present a major hazard to the marine environment as well as the human health. Therefore, they are prohibited, absolutely prohibited to be discharged into the sea. Next up is category Y substances, noxious liquid substances which fall under category Y when discharged into the sea from tank cleaning or deblasting operations present a hazard to the marine environment, not a major one, but still a hazard to the marine environment. And therefore, there is a limitation on the quality and quantity of the discharge of these substances into the sea. The noxious liquid substances which fall under category Z, if discharged into the sea after tank cleaning or deblasting operations, present a minor hazard to the marine environment. Therefore, there are even less stringent restrictions which are to be followed and they also can be discharged into the sea, keeping in mind the quality and the quantity of the discharge. The other substances are carried to present no harm to the marine environment, so they can be discharged into the sea with no restriction whatsoever after tank cleaning or deblasting operations. Now there are certain parameters of discharge of these noxious liquid substances on which their discharge standards are based upon. They are the maximum quantity of substances per tank which may be discharged into the sea. Now this is different for each tank depending upon the quantity of the chemicals that they can hold. The speed of the vessel during the discharge, the minimum distance from the nearest land during the discharge, the minimum depth of water at sea during the discharge, and whether the discharge is being carried out above the waterline or below the waterline. So let us look at the discharge standards of these noxious liquid substances. The first is that the ship should be proceeding en route and the speed of the vessel which is self-propelled should be a minimum of 7 knots and in case if it is not self-propelled it should be a minimum of 4 knots. The discharge of these substances should be made below the water line through the underwater discharge outlet not exceeding the maximum rate for which it is designed. The discharge should be made at a distance of 12 nautical miles or more from the nearest land and the depth of water should not be less than 25 meters in any case. 
Now special area is a sea area where due to certain oceanographic conditions, environmental conditions and due to the traffic density in that area, certain regulations need to be implemented for the environmental protection of that area. So as per Annex 2, there is just a single special area which is the Antarctic area. Now as per Annex 2, every ship which is carrying noxious liquid substances in bulk and complying with Annex 2 of MARPOL needs to carry a P and A manual which is the procedure and arrangement manual which is approved by the administration. What is the main purpose of this manual? The, this procedure and arrangement manual contains some important guidelines and the operational procedures which need to be followed during cargo handling, tank cleaning, slop handling and cargo tank blasting and deblasting operations. Every ship which is carrying noxious liquid substances in bulk needs to carry a cargo record book. This cargo record book contains specific entries which are to be made on the basis of cargo handling. Each entry of this cargo record book has to be signed by the officer in charge and each page has to be signed by the master of the vessel. The cargo record book shall be kept in such a place as to be readily available at all reasonable times for inspection and it shall be preserved for a period of three years after the last entry has been made. Now this is the list of entries which are to be made in the cargo record book. Loading of cargo, internal transfer of cargo during the voyage, unloading of cargo, mandatory pre-wash, cleaning of cargo tanks, discharge into the sea of tank washing, blasting of cargo tanks, discharge of ballast water from cargo tanks, accidental or exceptional discharge, control by authorized surveyors and additional operational procedures and remarks. So SMPEP is the Shipboard Marine Pollution Emergency Plan. Every vessel of 150 gross rate tonnage and above and which is carrying noxious liquid substances in bulk needs to carry and comply with an SMPEP which is the Shipboard Marine Pollution Emergency Plan which is approved by the administration. Now what does this plan consist of? This plan contains procedures to be followed to report a noxious liquid substance pollution incident. This contains a list of authorities or persons to be contacted in case of the, that incident. A detailed description of the action which needs to be taken by the ship's crew to reduce or control the discharge of this pollution incident. And the procedures or, and point of contact on the ship for coordinating shipboard actions with the national and local authorities in combating and reducing the extent of pollution. So by this we come to an end of